Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2017. Presented by AWS, Intel, and our ecosystem of partners. Welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE's special exclusive coverage of AWS reInvent 2017. Cube's our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, your co-host. With, with me today is Justin Warren, analyst. We have two sets here, here in Las Vegas. Our next guest is Sumit Singh, Vice President of Cloud Analytics with Juniper Networks, formerly of AppFormex, which was bought about a year ago. Cube alumni back. New team, Juniper, welcome back. Last time we chatted with you, you were entrepreneurial. Yep. Taking names, kicking ass, now you're? Part of Juniper Networks, yeah. You're part of Juniper Networks, what's going on? So we've, uh, essentially been building, building more and more, and it's actually been a totally awesome experience. So, last year, when we spoke, uh, you know, we were essentially looking at a whole, whole lot of private cloud deployments, looking at OpenStack, looking at Kubernetes, looking at VMware, and since what we've now started really expanding into is of course the multi-cloud and hybrid cloud scenario, and looking at how to secure these clouds, on-prem, in the cloud, multi-cloud, as well as you know, bring rich analytics into you know, like real-time operational insight as to what's going on you know, in all of these environments and how to optimize them. Yeah, that whole multi-cloud, hybrid cloud thing has really exploded in the, even in the last sort of 12 months. I've, I'm hearing from customers a lot more that they are pursuing a multi-cloud strategy, but it seems that there's just this proliferation of things that you've now got to try to monitor and secure. So how are you helping customers to do that? So, uh, I mean, you got to start with the basics, right? So the, the first thing that, that we got to realize is that, I mean, they are, of course there's companies that are born in the cloud. But then there's a whole bunch of others who have predominantly run their own data centers, run, run their application stacks on-prem, who are now looking to migrate to the public cloud and, and build out that, that entire multi-cloud scenario. In, in that situation, um, I mean, you, you need, I would say, a little bit of hand-holding, right? Yeah. You need to understand how your application is running on-prem, which ones can be moved to the cloud, how can they be moved to the cloud. You want to ensure that, you know, those policies that you were implementing on-prem, you'll be able to implement those same policies in, in the public cloud as well. So the monitoring really starts on-prem, right? All of those policies, the definition starts on-prem, and then you take them and you, build them and you... So you know, Sumit, I got to get your take on, I'd love to get your take too, Justin, on, yeah. on something that's going on that I see clear visibility on. Infrastructure operations, data center cloud, yep. get your house in order, yep. you know, networks, migration, hybrid cloud, multi-cloud. Bit of everything. And then, you know, all that stuff. Yep. And then you've got this developer tsunami going on, yep. renaissance of real new development, new kinds of development multiple databases using an app, you got IOT, so the software development methodologies are changing. How, for developers, that's obvious. What's the impact to the infrastructure guys? Yep. Because you're starting to see Lambda and serverless as a way for saying complete infrastructure as code. Yep. How, does yep. that, how does that change the notion of what the hell the data center is? Because you could argue that's just an edge now. So, yeah, hopefully. what's the software what are some of the software practices you see that are notable? So what's, what's truly amazing, like in all these things that you're saying, is that you no longer need to use one approach to build, build anything. Yeah. Any, any product that we put out or any service that we put out now uses a combination of all of these things. It's, it could be Lambda, it could be IoT, it could, you know, it could be a, a wholesale application that's orchestrated using Kubernetes that's spanning you know, that multi-cloud environment. So it's, it's, it's the, the beauty of all of this is the, the power of choice. We have so much more choice available to us, right? And then, but when choices, with choice comes that explosion and that complexity. It's, but the operations complexity, ask. Complexity is key, but speed is also there. Yeah. You're seeing, so the question is, at what point does the cream rise to the top and the people that are slow get run over well, we're, we're, we're just seeing another evolution in abstraction, really. It's like we don't write in assembly code anymore where we're writing directly to the hardware. We added in you know, higher level programming languages. And now, in terms of the infrastructure, developers don't care about infrastructure. As much as people talk about DevOps and they think, oh, DevOps is a thing, developers don't want to deal with infrastructure. They want to deal with code, because that's where they live. And the infrastructure folks, well, a lot of them are actually becoming developers now. Yeah. So they're, they're learning how to use tools like Git, like you know, using 
development tools to actually get their job done, which is where we see infrastructure as code. So there's a lot more of abstraction into pure software so that you don't have to worry about the underlying abstractions, at least not very much. All right, so many question to you now on that is, that requires the network guys, Juniper, you're part of that, and all the analytics to think differently about what you're instrumenting. Yep. To do what he said, to make it free, you got to enable a lot of policy, a lot of data analytics. So take us through what's the current state of the art there. So the current, current state of the art <laughs> is essential. If we, if we talk about Juniper products, we have our family of SRX products where you can have on-prem firewalls as well as virtual firewalls in, in the cloud. And using, you know, using these tools, you can have consistent security policies on-prem and in the cloud. You can create transit VPCs, connect up your applications in the multi-cloud world and do all kinds of fancy things. But where we are also going with our solutions is, is to make them much more simpler to consume. It's, tr it's truly all about simplicity, right? Because now you have all this choice and you can have Lambda and you, you, know, you, you can have all these, these new, new ways to bring up your applications. What becomes key is that the policies that you want to implement become automatic, yep. right? And, and the way to do that is, for, or the way we are doing that is essentially doing this auto learning of your environment, right? Automatically right. understanding. Automation. And, automation, right? Yep. But not aut automation in two parts, as in automatically detect what's going on, but then automatically apply the policies as well, no matter where the workload is and where it's scaling we automatically apply the policies to it. So it's a lot of investment in, in the smarts of underlying, making something simple is actually quite complex to do. So you need to understand what are the right things to automate and what are the, the, th the few things where you actually want to give humans that choice without it becoming overwhelming so that, okay, I have to choose between one of 800 different ways of doing this. That's just not something that humans cope well with. Whereas machines are actually really good at that. Yeah, and, and that's, that's the value here. We want to hide all the complexity under the hood. You know, use those advanced ML algorithms, use, uh, you know, whether they be on-prem or in the cloud, running all of the analysis, implementing all the right policies for you, right? And new, new workload comes up, it should automatically get the policy, right? And we are now able to do that both in, in the private data center as well as in the public cloud and bridge those policies together for you automatically. So the common theme we're seeing in cloud, we just had a guest on from Thorne where they automated essentially uh, police officers writing down notes on a notebook to fully spotting with machine learning all this great stuff to find missing and exploited children. Manual the, sucks, basically. Right? You got to do manual slow. The workload's too dynamic now to, for you to think I about can, manual. I want real time. So you most real organizations, time. Uh, what's going on there? How do you guys help there? What's, what's the progress? Oh, so this is actually a great question, by the way. So, and this is a part of the reason why we, like as a, as a company, as a startup, we were like doing all this cool stuff and innovating and you know, not really thinking about all the, hey, this is slowing me down. The reason why we went to Juniper, uh, if you look at the, you know, the history of Juniper and the product portfolio and the, and the stack at Juniper, when it comes to automation, when it comes to things like APIs, when it comes to th things like policy, they've always kind of like led the pack in that networking space. And now this is the opportunity to take that, that wealth of knowledge and scale it out and take it to the, you know, to the broader multi-cloud, hybrid cloud space. But that's truly where it is. And it, even if you kind of like a go down low level to the devices, all Juniper devices are able to stream real-time telemetry. We're able to do ML in real-time even on the physical devices, right? Similar for, for our virtual devices. And now with our Formix, we even bring in the performance and operations inside from the running infrastructure, whether it's on-prem and in the cloud. Not just networking, but the compute, the databases, your applications, your Kubernetes clusters, all of that to, to build for you this end-to-end this -end view, right? Not just the networks, your, your servers, VMs, workloads, the underlying network, the connectivity, all of it. Right, how does that, because the developers, are, they, they live in application land, and again, they don't really care about that infrastructure, but as it turns out, sometimes it's quite useful to know which particular network devices or, or what the infrastructure is that underpins things, like where you sometimes need to be able to drop into assembly code to really optimize things. So are you, are you making that information about the infrastructure visible to developers in a way that they like to, to know and consume? 
Absolutely. So uh, one key thing about uh, you know our product portfolio and uh, how we are releasing our services is essentially we've wrapped everything around in, you know these role-based access interfaces, right. where both the operators are able to get their views, they're able to construct views that the developers are able to see, and then both can implement their own policies, right? If if let's say there's a there's some infrastructure that's down or is unhealthy then having that, that global topology view yep. helps you in real time correlate and in real time informs you what the impact of that outage is. Like who are the developers who will be impacted, what are their applications. Yeah. And you know, we can bring that insight and then consume it to run the automation. Okay. So if, let's just say, some infrastructure is unhealthy, can you read out the traffic? Smith, talk about what, the, what you guys are doing here. Obviously Amazon, big learning conference, but it's a massive show, 45,000 people here across multiple hotels, um, a lot of sessions. Yeah. What are you guys talking about? What's the big cloud piece for you guys? So the, for us, really, first is, it's just visibility, right? We want, we have a, a, a product portfolio that gives you visibility, right? Like, both for your physical infrastructure, and your virtual infrastructure, right? Then the next thing is, of course, you know, yeah, you have the visibility, but then at our scale, no human can consume all of that information. Yeah, right? it's too slow. Scale. It's too slow. Yeah. So you, you got to have the machine learning built in. So it's converting that visibility into insights in real time, right? And then it's about how do you secure your workloads, right? So consuming all of that insight to implement all of the policies, implement all of the automation, to ensure that everything is running as you want it to. You know, all right, so what's your Juniper message to the developers here? Is there a new face to Juniper? Is there a new vibe? You mentioned Juniper's always had great products. Yeah. They can move packets around at lightning speeds, you know, wire speeds, all that great stuff. Yep. How do you, what's new? What's, what does it mean for me as a developer? What's, what is Juniper, how does it make my life easier? What's new is that now it's easier for developers to consume our products. Our products are now available in the Amazon marketplace, right? Our visibility products, our machine learning products, our security products, right? You can just click, install, and start using them. That's new for Juniper, right? I mean, traditionally so you think of- get the Juniper goodness by just by treating it like a library. That's it. You, you, can, you can just download, not even download, right? You're, Running in Amazon, <laughs> right? You it's serverless. It's, it's routerless. It's deviceless. There you go. You can just start consuming them, and then uh, if if you do have if you do have that knowledge of how to you know use those devices on prem, you can apply that knowledge in, in the cloud and, and use them. Or it reminds me of grid just, computing back in like what twenty years ago. <laughs> I mean, isn't that like just a grid now? Almost, yeah, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> it's a but fabric. It's, it's the same, it's like if you already know how to use it in one place, you know how to use it everywhere. Yeah, but I mean, it's, but really the value in the cloud is making it even simpler, right? Ma running all of that automation, like we, we talked about Lambda. Like even within our product family, we can we use Lambda to constantly see what's changing and that's how we process lots of our internal transactions as well. Sumit, congratulations on your acquisition and Thank your entrepreneurial you. journey and now you're at Juniper. Looking forward to keeping in touch. Thank you. Sumit Singh, Vice President of Cloud Analytics and now at Juniper Networks, formerly of App4Mex, CUBE alumni. Thanks for having, coming on and sharing your commentary. I'm John Furrier, Justin Warren, here on theCUBE, main stage in Las Vegas at AWS reInvent. We'll be back with more after this short break.